others prosper eternally. When it comes to this gospel, I got no chill. For real, I can teach you how to hope. Neighborhood hope. Yeah. And I have here, this is why God hates complaining. If you think about uh, the nation of Israel, when when they left Egypt, okay, in, in the book of Exodus, if you read the book of Exodus, I can't tell you, uh, so many times the, the nation of Israel, they murmured and complained and then something would come on them. You know, snakes would come or, you know, whatever, something bad would come on them. God's anger, you know, God would get mad and then, you know, something would happen to them. And they just constantly murmured and complained. They were never happy. It was never enough. And, and the reason God hates murmuring and complaining is because of words. He understood the power of words. The Israelites at the time, the Old Testament believers, they didn't understand the power of words. They didn't understand, you know, you, you, when you say, you sow, and things like this. And so every time they murmured and complained, and that's all the nation of Israel did. They just murmured and complained constantly, all the time. They were just sowing all these negative seeds, all these negative seeds. And when you see them murmuring and complaining, all this bad stuff comes on them from all all this murmuring and complaining but again this is why God hates it because when you're murmuring and complaining you're hindering God okay I have here Psalms 22 3 it says but thou art holy O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel God inhabits the praises of his people amen I know you guys have heard that when you're murmuring and complaining God can't inhabit that that's why God hates it because he can't flow through it. He can't move through it. He can't bless you. If all you're doing is sitting around being negative and murmuring and complaining, God can't move in that situation. He can't bring change about. He can't do anything. Literally, when you murmur and complain, you tie the hands of God. It's nothing he can do in that situation. That's why he hates it so much. And he knows that all you're doing is just sowing seeds of death and you're literally blocking life. You're literally blocking the source. You're blocking God from helping you. But when you begin to praise God, when you begin to operate with an attitude of gratitude and you're positive and you're encouraging, you know, and you're always trying to find the good in every situation, Man, God inhabits that and he can flow through that. He can move through that to come in and change that situation. You know, okay, and, I, and I've used the example of say a car wreck. Okay, you know, you're not gonna say, oh God, thank you for this car wreck. That's ridiculous, that doesn't make sense. But even in something like a car wreck, you can say, Lord, you know, I may have destroyed my car, but thank you that I didn't lose my life. I can replace my car. You know, even if I got hurt, Lord, thank you for healing. You've already healed me 2,000 years ago. Healing is part of the finished works of Jesus. This too shall pass. You know, in every situation, you can find something good, you know, to be happy about, to be thank or not, you know, to be thankful for, to praise. That's why it's called a sacrifice of praise. Sometimes it's all we can do. We got to praise God through gritted teeth. We got to praise God through tears. We got to just try to force ourselves to find something to praise God for. If it ain't even nothing in that situation, God, thank you that I have breath in my body. Thank you that I am in my right mind and I can still think on you and focus on you. And no matter what this situation looks like right now, I know that this too shall pass. You've already made an escape. You've made a way out of this. You are he who supplies all my needs. Like I said, even if it's nothing in that situation, you can still Praise God. You know what I'm saying? Find something to praise God for because praise is a weapon. Praise is powerful. Praise is a tool because again, God inhabits the praises of his people. God, the Holy Spirit lives in us. Amen. Now this is Old Testament. These people didn't have the spirit of God in them. So God, so when they praise God, amen, if you read when they praise God, you know, like a cloud came down, the glory of God came down and God literally came and inhabited their praise, you know. So whenever they were doing praise and worship, God literally a cloud, the glory cloud of God would come and inhabit that work, that praise and worship. We now have God living on the inside of us. So now when we praise God, in a bad situation when we praise God in a negative circumstance when we're having a bad day we're literally releasing the power of God into that situation amen so he can move into that situation but when you're murmuring and complaining you shut the door you tie the hands of God there's nothing he can do so you're just gonna be stuck in that situation and murmuring and complaining and continuing to murmur and complain but the minute you start switching gears and start 
focusing on God, being grateful, being thankful for whatever, whatever it is, amen, then through that, God will be able to move. Okay, so we believe, therefore we speak. You're going to speak what you believe, and whether that's positive or negative, life or death, those words carry the power to fulfill themselves. Okay, we do this all day, every day. Now, here's the thing. If you could record yourself all day, what would it sound like? You know, back in the 80s and stuff, we had tape recorders and stuff, and I had literally tried this at one time, and it was amazing. But, like, seriously... If you could record yourself all day, what would it sound like at the end of the day? Think about that. How would it sound? Proverbs 17, 27 says here, he who has knowledge restrains and is careful with his words. And a man of understanding and wisdom has a cool spirit, self-control and even temper. I put that in red. He who has knowledge restrains and is careful with his words and a man of understanding and wisdom. He has a cool spirit, he or she, self-control and an even temper. Amen. Words are valuable. God spoke everything into existence and we are creating his image again. So when we speak, we create. It's up to us what we create. The choice is ours. But I mean, look, look at how many different scriptures I'm sharing with you on words. The Bible is full, and this is not even all of them, y'all. The Bible is full of scriptures telling us to watch our mouth, to guard our hearts, telling us to have wisdom, to restrain ourselves. He who has knowledge restrains and is careful with his words, to be careful with what we say. This is like the key to life, y'all. This stuff is so important. Here, Jesus. You ain't even got over to James yet. <laughs> yeah. James get, get raw with it. <laughs> James get raw with it. And we ain't even got over there yet. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Jesus said, I can only say what I hear my father saying. He was a channel for God's word. Okay. First John 4, 17 says that as Jesus is, so are we. We can be channels for God's word as well. If we choose to be. If what we if if we what if we only spoke words of life if we only spoke positive words it would change your world and it would change your life okay this is the power that our words have okay we need to count them as precious as nuggets of gold we don't want to just spew out the first thing that comes to our minds and like and I have here we have the ability to change the environment around us. When we walk into the room, this is what I was telling you about. When we walk into the room, we literally bring the spirit of God with us and we can choose to release that spirit into the atmosphere or, and literally when we do that, we can change the atmosphere with our words. It's up to us. What do we want to choose? Do you want to choose life? Do you want to choose death? If you walk into a negative situation, you can choose because you got the spirit of God on the inside of you. You can affect that environment. Okay. You don't have to come into agreement with that negativity that's going on. You can choose to acknowledge the spirit of God that's on the inside of you and you can release the life and the power and the presence of God into that situation. Whether you say any words in that situation or not, if you come into an environment I do this a lot. I mean, with the other job that I had, not so much with this job, but it, I would come into an environment and just walk in and it just be just a, a bad situation going on at work or whatever. I just start praying in tongues. Amen. Tongues is, I just start speaking blessings. I just start praising God. I start praying in tongues. Okay. Because, and I'd be praying in tongues under my breath, you know, nothing crazy at work because I'm a nurse I would have a mask on so I'd be praying in tongues but literally people are unaware I'm literally walking down the hall releasing the power and the presence of God because as I'm walking down that hallway under my mask under my breath I'm praying in tongues releasing the spirit of God because when I came in I just said I was like oh uh -uh. greater is he that is in me mm -mm. it ain't going like this not today not while Lena her own shift is not happening like that and I'm walking releasing the power of God amen through my words through praying in tongues if you don't have a prayer language, you know if you don't have a heavenly prayer language and you don't pray in tongues just start praising God under your breath but I definitely encourage you to pray in tongues we have a video on our channel that talks about praying in tongues where you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit if you don't have it 
highly encourage you to get it, man, because that is a power tool. That is a power gift that we only need while we're here on the earth. We're not going to be praying in tongues when we get to heaven because when we get to heaven, we're going to know all things. We're going to have our, you know, uh, uh, glorified mind. We're going to have our glorified bodies, you know. What we know in part now, we'll know in full when we go to heaven. So tongues is a gift that God gave us right now to be able to access what we have in our spirit. Amen. It's like whenever we pray in tongues, it's like we're taking a bucket and we're dipping into the well of the wisdom, the knowledge, the revelation, the power, the presence of God that we have on the inside of us. So literally, like I said, I would walk into a room aware that I'm carrying the kingdom of God that I'm carrying the spirit and I'm walking down the hall praying in tongues and just stuff would start happening. The day would begin to turn around. Amen. Cause I'm changing the atmosphere because I'm aware of that. And I believe that I have the power to do that. And you have the power to do that too. If you're a born again believer and you got the spirit of God on the inside of you, you just got to know it first and believe it and then just act on it. Mm -hmm. Or it could be that you speak words and you're you're encouraging somebody maybe that's having a bad day or it's a bad situation that's going on and and you know you have wisdom to reveal in that situation you know to help bring it about you know sometimes you can just ask god lord what what, what needs to happen here your know, holy spirit talk to me the holy spirit loves for us to talk to him we just don't acknowledge him enough he's there he's always just there waiting acknowledge him he becomes effective you know when we acknowledge him just acknowledge him be like you know holy spirit what should i do in this you know that's that close intimate personal relationship amen that eternal life just ask him the holy spirit he'll tell you sometimes you say something sometimes you don't need to say nothing sometimes he'll tell you just pray just you know whatever but we can literally change the environment we can change the atmosphere just like how somebody negative can walk in the room and suck all the energy out of it and bring the room down or somebody happy can walk in the room and bring the room up man we got god in us of course we can mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so proverbs 10 19 i'm just throwing scriptures at y'all proverbs 10 19 in the multitude of words sin is not lacking but he who restrains his lips is wise again watch your mouth he's saying in the multitude of words sin is not lacking okay so you know people they just flapping the gums okay in the multitude of words sin is not lacking but he who restrains his lips is wise we have got to be more careful with our words they reveal our nature they reveal our heart amen they they reveal who we are i have here god's word is truth the truth can change facts John 17, 17 says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Sanctify means to be separated. When we speak truth or the word of God, we will be separated. Amen. What will we be separated from? We will be separated from sickness. We will be separated from poverty and lack. We will be separated from fear. We will be separated from destruction. We will be separated from the negative circumstances and situations that we see going on when we speak the word of God. Truth has got to be our standard. And this is, this is big today because everybody's got their own personal truth. You know, everybody's like, well, I'm just living my own personal truth. You know what? The only real truth is, is God's word, the truth in God's word. Truth has got to be our standard. God's word has got to be our standard. What is G the word says that Jesus came full of, of, of grace and truth. Jesus has got to be our standard. Amen. Truth has to be more valuable to us than anything. We have got to speak words of truth words of life your words reveal your character your words reveal your nature your words reveal your heart your words reveal your relationship with the father your words reveal your relationship with jesus again jesus is the word again jesus is truth he is the way the truth and the life when the bible says the truth will set you free it is literally saying a relationship with jesus will set you free Jesus will sanctify you or separate you from the corruption that is in the world. And that sanctification will set you free. So again, when you say what God says, when you think 
what God thinks, how God thinks. Amen. When you let God's truth, Jesus be your standard that will sanctify you. Sanctify just means separated. That will sanctify you or separate you from the corruption in the world. Again, that's going to separate you from sickness. Not saying you won't ever get sick, but if sickness attacks your body, you know what the word says about healing. You know how to exercise your authority. You know how to speak to that mountain and command it to be cast into the sea and it, sh it must obey. You know how to praise your way through it. Amen. If, 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 pa if a lack situation presents itself you know how to give you know how to give and it shall be given to you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom you know how to sow that seed and speak over that seed amen so that financial seed so that it can produce a harvest you know when you let the word of God the truth be your standard you know how to respond to the situations of life and that response is going to separate you amen it's going to sanctify you if you will separate you it'll keep you from that corruption in the world amen okay guys well i'm gonna be trying i'm gonna try to wrap this up here pretty quick i just got a few more scriptures to share with y'all okay proverbs 8 7 and 8 it says for my mouth will speak truth wickedness is an abomination to my lips all the words of my mouth are with righteousness nothing crooked or perverse is in them okay now this is solomon here he didn't even have the spirit of god living in him or the baptism of the holy spirit like we do today so if solomon was able to say for my mouth will speak truth wickedness is an abomination to my lips all the words of my mouth are with righteousness nothing crooked or perverse is in them if solomon had a revelation of this and he was able to do it how much more so should we be able to do that today filled with the holy spirit amen we have so much more potential and help to put a watch on our mouths today than they did in the old testament but it starts with a choice we can choose we can choose words of love we can choose words of life but the point is we have so much more help today we have so much more potential to speak life amen but even in the old testament we see people like solomon saying oh i have to guard the words of my house even in the old testament they had a revelation of how important their words were what they let come out of their mouth amen okay and then i have here matthew chapter 15 verse 11 it says not what goes into the mouth defiles a man but what comes out of the mouth this defiles a man again now this was jesus here and he was you know talking to his disciples and he was you know and back then they were under the law so they couldn't eat pork and shellfish and all this other kind of stuff but jesus was saying it's not what you put in your mouth it's not what you eat that defiles you or make you makes you unclean but what comes out of your mouth this is what defiles a man the words that come out of your mouth not the food you eat but the words that come out again jesus here just stressing the importance of our words so I have here, when you find yourself speaking negative, stop, command a crop failure of that negative seed that was sown and then begin to speak life. So if you found yourself speaking negative, murmuring and complaining, or you know, whatever, saying something bad, sowing some bad seeds out there, and the minute you become aware of that, just stop and immediately command a crop failure of that negative seed word that was sown. And it's very simple. I do it all the time. I say, you know what, Father? I repent of those bad words and I command a crop failure of every negative C word sown. And I just release the blessing right now. And then you say the negative. You say the opposite of what you were just saying. And you begin to sow those positive seeds. That's how you can stop that. Amen. In his tracks. Because if you've been a murmurer or a complainer, or you murmur or complain, or something happens and you just start speaking negative, or you get in the negative, you know it happens. We're human. Command a crop failure. The minute you become aware of that, command a crop failure of those negative seed words sown, and then begin to speak life. Begin to sow seeds of positivity, seeds of love, seeds of life. Amen. 
So, um, again, all of these scriptures, again, I'm throwing a lot of scriptures at you. We're throwing a lot of scriptures at you. But it's just because, again, the Bible is full of this, just showing how important our words are. Earlier, Dale had mentioned um, a scripture in James, and I just wanted to share that with you quickly as we get ready to close. And that's James chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. And I'm actually going to read this from the NIV version. It says, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take shape ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. So again, that's just showing the importance of your words. This little bitty member, your tongue, it sets the whole course of your life. Just like a big old you, we just came back from a cruise. You're on a big old huge ship, but you have a little tiny rudder that's got in this gigantic ship through the ocean, you know, or like a bit in the horse's mouth is going to guide where this horse goes. The same with our tongue, or even like a little spark can start a huge forest fire. A little spark can burn down a whole forest. This little bitty tongue literally sets the course of our lives and it can set a path of fire and destroy everything in its wake by the words of our mouth, amen? Or we can choose to speak life, but it's up to us. It all comes down to a choice. Do so, you believe that? Do you believe that? That's what it's all about, choices. You got to choose to believe. You know, um, I was talking to God about this the other day. You know, we spend a lot of time trying to, Lord, give us the way to articulate this so people can get an understanding and have a desire to, to seek you. We spend a lot of time doing that, preaching to ourselves, going over the scriptures uh, so we can present it to you guys. Um, but it's still all uh, we can present it eloquently with a college education, with an accent, but it still comes down to you choosing whether you believe it or not, whether you believe the Bible, you know, whether you believe God's word. You know what I mean? Because that's all we're doing is reading God. We didn't say this. We didn't make this up. We didn't. This is what God's saying. But, uh, so, yeah. And y'all see, it's throughout, not to cut you off. Oh, I've shared Old Testament scriptures. James, that's New, Cup, New Testament. We share it. I mean, it's all throughout. From the Old Testament to the New. Watch your mouth. The power of your words. Literally, life and death is in the tongue. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, you were done. Okay, I didn't mean to cut you off. But guys, on that note, you know, we're going to go ahead and close for today. I hope these videos have just really shed some light on your words, the power of your words, um, you know, and just just the importance of, of how you speak and to choose life, to be aware of what we're saying and to always choose life and just pause, just pause. When you feel yourself about to go off, just pause. Count to 10, count to 100, walk away, take a deep breath. If you feel like you're about to flip and go off on somebody and cuss them out, speak in tongues. You do what you got to do to get control of that tongue. Amen. Because the power of life and death in it is in it. And what you're going to say is either going to release the blessing or it's going to release the curse. And it's going to set the course for everything and how everything goes. So, guys, anything else to share? <laughs> okay, so guys, on that note, we are going to go ahead and close for today. But uh, we're talking about choices. And so, again, bef before we close, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to make the best choice that you will ever make in your life. And that choice is to choose Jesus. Amen. And I have here Romans chapter 10. Uh, verses 9 through 10 and 13. And it says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, 
we want to give you that opportunity to call on the name of the Lord right now. If you're not born again, or if you would like to rededicate yourself, then please just say this simple prayer with us. Pray out loud. Jesus. Jesus. I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And by faith in your word. And by faith in your word. I receive salvation I receive now. salvation now. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's it, y'all. If you said that prayer, if you said that simple prayer and you meant it from your heart, you just made the best choice you will ever made and you just chose life. Amen. You have now entered into the realm of eternal life. You're now able to start building that close, personal, intimate relationship with God the Father, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit has now come to live on the inside of you. You have now become that new creation in Christ Jesus. You've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness now into the kingdom of light and you're like oh my goodness all that happened from that prayer yes it did yes sir yes ma'am if you said that prayer in faith believing it amen it all happened in the twinkling of an eye it says we're transformed in the twinkling of an eye it all happened so welcome to the family <laughs> so guys on that note did you want to pray out real quick yeah i'll pray father we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us we thank you that you would use us to speak through us what you want us to share. We thank you that hearts are open to receive and that the light bulb will come on as they listen to these scriptures with revelation knowledge of you, your word, your will, your way. We thank you that this session is blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So guys, on that note, we're going to go ahead and close for today. Uh, if you find value in any of these videos, please like, comment, share, subscribe, because all that helps our channel. Uh, and as always, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and continued blessings. Deuces.